brilliant. Wow. Uh, yeah, I nearly said his name once, ever, it would just be gone. Yeah. Um, let's talk about your career. Yeah. Because honestly, yeah. that is... Um, Was. <laughs> will be. Um, Hopefully, yeah. I mean, you've done some amazing in your career. I mean, you were successful. I was, yeah. Very young. Sorry, Harry, don't, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go on. Yeah, so um, one thing I wanted to ask is, did you secure 600 grand of funding for kid adulthood? No, I didn't secure it. Right. There was a producer that secured it. Have you ever raised funding for your films? Yeah, yeah, I've been involved in raising funding for some of the later films, meeting the right people and... and and bringing stuff together. Although I'm not a very good, like, I'm not a very good, uh, I'm not a mathematician. So once the thing's greenlit, I can bring stuff in, but once it's greenlit, you come and do the budget, you come and yeah. do the, you know, right. you come and do that, you look after the account, you be the line producer. I'm not, you know, I'm not all of that. But yeah, yeah. so I brought money to some of the later films. So you're looking at like, you know, your, your, your brotherhoods, your 10 by 10s and, and stuff like yeah. that for sure. But the early one, Kidhood, it was six hundred thousand or maybe five fifty or whatever like that. I did not raise any of that. No. No. I was just a excuse me. I was just an actor who was writing at yeah. the time. And how did your life change after Kid Hood? It didn't. Really? I mean it did in terms of like I was suddenly had a movie out there. Mm. But it didn't do you know, people see everything I've achieved and think that I was let in or that I was like the chosen one. I was not. I was most definitely not. And, but I've just kept going and kept jumping the obstacles and bursting through the barriers and kicking the doors open and when they lock the doors, climbing in the window, like. Mm. So after kiddohood, uh, nothing, I got nothing. Like I didn't get any, I didn't get any more real opportunities to write and direct. So I did what I always do. I just wrote myself. I just wrote, I just wrote scripts, just wrote, much like I'm doing now. I've got now, I'm just writing. Yeah. I'm just writing. I'm just writing some of the best stuff I've ever written. And I look at everything that's happened. And I look at the things on TV and I kind of, part of me is like, oh man, I wish I was doing what I do. And they're going, oh, you're so arrogant. Like the stuff I did was always different. It was always different. You know, I've been told I'm on the spectrum before, you know, my. By a normie probably. <laughs> yeah, by, by a normie. Yeah. I've been told, I've been told I'm on the spectrum a few times. I've never been diagnosed. So this is self-diagnosis or whatever, <laughs> but I have been told a few times, right? And I can buy it because, <clears throat> you know, I have this just different way of thinking about things, you know, bit of OCD, bit of sort of like, you know, go to a restaurant, order the same thing, walk, leave out the same door when I leave Sainsbury's, you know, like, you know, want to go on the same holiday all the time. Like it's a bit of mm. stuff there, but like I have this, off kilter way of thinking which that means that if my voice is not on tv or film it's just like for me i'm just kiddohood and those films were how, different how are you different how's your content different i don't know man i i i i feel i know my audience and i know what they want to watch mm. i feel like i just think in an off kilter way i'll give you an example mm. in a second but you know kiddohood and those things were different Kid or, the bulletproof, the cop show. Like, when have you ever seen a cop show like that in the mm. UK? Like, mm. the more procedural, the more like that was just action. Mm. It was like vibes. It was like bad boys. I think differently. Um, so an example is in season one of Bulletproof. There's a scene in in episode I forget what episode it was where there's a villain who's done something. I think he's kidnapped Ashley's kid, and then I catch the informer, and I threaten him with a crowbar threaten him with a crowbar and I go, you're going to tell me or I'm going to hit you or whatever like that. And he's like, you're not going to hit me, blah, blah, blah. Now we know in 99% in of British cop shows, they're not going to hit him with a crowbar. They can't do it. It's procedure, it's whatever like that. And I had a big battle with the broadcaster because I was like, he's got to hit him. And they were like, well, well he's a police officer. He can't, he couldn't possibly. I said, you know, this protocol. I said, he's got to hit him. He says, because if I'm Joe Public sitting at home and this villain's like, you ain't going to hit me and the cop knows he can't hit him. That's what we always see. Mm. I said, but if he hits him, everyone at home's gonna be like, oh my God, he fucking hit him. Mm. So he's got to hit him. Mm. That's what this character has to be. That's what we got to do. And it, it, it had to go up like levels yeah. to get approval to come yeah. down. And eventually they said, yeah, fine, hit him. Mm. You got this scene, blah, blah, blah. and I clumped the guy with a crowbar. Mm. And the amount of people that said to me, bro, when you hit that guy with a crowbar, I was jumping up in the air. 
because as an audience member, you've got a villain like that. You think, that's is that, if that was me, I would hit him. And if you've got a character that you relate to that then does stuff like that, that's what draws you in. Mm. And the reason that a lot of the stuff I did was successful, it wasn't because it was the best, it wasn't. It's because I did things that the audience themselves would want to do. You know, I made them on the edge. I made our films slightly racier than a 15 would be, you know. We basically cut them and the BBFC would go, that's an 18. Mm. And we'd go, why is it an 18? Tell us exactly why it's an 18. And I'd go, well, f on 18 minutes, 51 seconds, you have a frame and you show this and da 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 And then we would just trim out the frames that they complained about and send it back. And they'd be like, motherfucker, <laughs> this is now a 15, but you're on the line. We're like, but it's a 15, yeah. And I would do all of that stuff intentionally. And did that, does that make you feel good? It does, it's not that it makes me feel good, but it's like, I know when I was young and Robocop was an 18 and I was 15, oh, yeah. I wanted to watch Robocop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, and the Arnie films. And the yeah. Arnie films. I didn't want to watch the films that were from my age. Nah. So I always tried to make things, I always tried to be that when I was making stuff. And so when they say, oh, his stuff is misogynistic, it wasn't intentionally, mis I wasn't intentionally like, oh, I'm going to show boob, I'm going to show this mm. and that and the other. It wasn't like, because I was leering. It's because I was like, I know what the audience wants to see. So I'm going to just, in a 50, and I'm just going to have that there on the edge so that people in the cinema are going to be like, all right, let's, did you see, did you see that? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. when they leave, they, what they do, tell their friends, man, mm. you got to watch the film because it, this, this happens and that happens. And then when the films make money, everyone's scratching their heads. How did they make money? But this other film we made, which was wonderful, made no money. It's because that's what I do. I just think slightly differently. Mm. I just always thought oddly, mm. I'm odd. <laughs> do you see yourself as an entrepreneur? Would you say you're an entrepreneur? No. Short answer, no. What would you call yourself? If you're like identifying, if you had to put on the top of your CV, applying for jobs, what would you put as your... I've no idea. Just no. A, I'm just a guy. Because a lot of my guys don't know what... That, I've yes, no so, idea. No. I feel like to be an entrepreneur, you have to have... I guess I do have a lot of ideas. I feel like you have to have... I feel like you have to have backing. I feel like you have to have... I, I, no. I feel like I've never had backing. It, for, to be an entrepreneur, you either need to have your own finance, your own capital, or you have to have backing to, 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 to make your ideas go forth. And I've always thought of myself as the, the outsider. I've always thought of myself as the, the, the black sheep. So I've never thought that I've had backing. And most of my things have been financed independently, apart from when we got to Bulletproof TV. But then I will always hold on to the fact that they told us for years that will never get made. I always, I always use the negative stuff as, fu as, as fuel, mm. as fuel. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I'll, I'll, I'll always use that, you know. And I get, again, that's a thing I had to really look at in therapy. It's like, but you've achieved the number one. You had the number one show in, in, the, in the country. Like, were you, were you celebrating? I was like, no. I was going because you told us it would never happen, yeah. and that was my, that was my, that was my drive. That was my fuel. Everyone's like, mate, this is brilliant, mm. and I'm like, yeah, but they told us that we'd never do it, and we've done it, mm. and they were like. Just celebrate for a second. Mm. And I'd be you, like, no. Do you think that's healthy? No. I think it's helpful. I think it's helpful. Mm. I don't necessarily think it's healthy. I think there has to be a balance. There has to be a ba there has to be a balance. I don't want to admit that there has to be a balance, but I feel there has to be a balance. But I also think it's helpful and it helped me more. If I did not have that drive and if I didn't have that sort of, if I didn't have that you're trying to stop me mentality, mm. I would never have worked as hard as I did. Mm. I would never have had that drive. I'd never had that passion. I would have never had that, that focus. I would never have had that I'm going to show you. Because even, <laughs> even when people weren't trying to stop me, I was like, they're trying to stop me. I'm going to work harder than them. Mm. You know what I mean? It was something I had to learn about myself. That I have to hold my hands up and go, how can you be better? And I don't mean better as in lose it, because it helped me. But better as in not always. I would walk into meetings. Alright, well, let's see what they're gonna tell let's see what they're gonna tell me I can't do. They're like, it's wonderful to see you. And I'd be like, yeah, you too. And in my head I'm like, you don't mean it. 
<laughs> it's an attitude for sure, mm. but it, 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 it fueled me. It fueled me in terms of making me work harder than most people. Mm. I had a conversation with a really successful artist, but he's not that well known, but he's basically Banksy's inspiration. And I think about this all the time, <laughs> and you've just kind of like woken it up in my head, and, and it's this. I said to him, are any great artists happy? And he said, well, yeah, surely some. And then we went through it, and by the end of it, he agreed. No. You can't be happy and a great f artist. No, you can't, because you're always trying. No, you can't. And there's so much in the world now, maybe, you know, let's use some terms like woke and left and blah, 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 about, you know, happiness and taking part and all that. And I just think, I look at anyone who's f great at something, an artist, you, you know, a, a sports person, an entrepreneur, happiness isn't the goal. No. They're not happy people. They're productive. They're relentless. They're, you know when you said helpful? Yeah. Not happy. I'm not happy that I'm taking everyone's, you know, energy of you're going to fail and turn it into a mission. Yeah. I'm not happy about that at all, but it really helps me. It helps me, yeah. yeah. It's so do you think anyone that's going to be great at anything can be happy no. as well? No. Well, it, 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 no. Is the short answer. The longer, <laughs> the longer answer. I like both is, versions. But the longer answer is, of course, I'm happy when I'm with my kids. Mm. I'm happy when I see my family in Canada because all my family went to Canada from Trinidad. Like my mom came here, they all went. There. I'm happy. Like I'm happy. Mm. Like I'm happy. But that's charity. Yeah, that they make me happy. Mm. But in my ultimate like drive, happiness would not have me doing what I did. No. I would not have succeeded if I was happy. No. Right, I would not have. Someone said to me, and again, watch James English. Sorry, he he said to me, "Were you ever satisfied?" And I was like, "No." Well, that's not the goal, is it? People think that's the goal. Well, here's the interesting point. He said to me, "What was the goal then?" I don't know what the goal was because every time I got there, I there was another one. Well, it's progress, isn't it? But where does it end? It doesn't, because it, do, it, it can't do, end, it otherwise do, it's right. no progress. That's right. Yeah. So, so every time, every time I set a goal in my head or I set a, a thing that I wanted to achieve, I want to have an action figure. I want to have my own TV show. I want to have my own movies. I want to have my own company. I want to star in my own movies. I want to be a bona fide star in this country and not have to jet off to America. I want to, I want to produce this. I want to write this. Every single time I had a goal in my head where I thought, when I have that, <laughs> I'll be good. When I got there, I wasn't good. I was like, what's next? Mm. I remember the ultimate thing was like, one day I want to get a, a, a BAFTA and then I got one. And I was like, I don't give a fuck about this. Mm. Put it on the shelf. How do I get another one? Yeah. What do I do tomorrow morning? I want to star in a movie. Done that. I, I was, I was never, you know. I had goals. I will say, dreaming is for sleepers. I didn't have dreams. Dreaming is for sleepers. I'm not a sleeper. I'm like goal oriented. But the problem, or the issue, or the, the 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 drive, whether you see it as positive or negative, the fact remains is when I got to those places. <laughs> it's like in the Dark Knight when Heath Ledger says, "I just do things." I'm like a dog chasing a car. I wouldn't know what to do if I caught one. <laughs> yeah. I love that, man. I loved it because it's, I'm the same. Like, I got to those points where I was like, this is what I want to achieve. And then I did it. Had my action figure on my hand. I was like, what do I do now? Mm. And, and that was continue Every time, like we got our, when we got our production company, <laughs> we got our production company because we basically, our, our films are doing well, blah, blah, blah. We got into TV, we got a production company, Bulletproof's there, whatever. And I remember going very early on and pitching a show to a broadcaster, very early on. Because in films, right, in films, as, if you give me the money for a film, I can make a film. I can make a film and it's coming out. It's coming out somewhere. In TV, you've got the broadcasters. So even if you gave me the money for a TV show, if the broadcasters don't put it on, so very early on, we had a meeting, I pitched a show, and they were like, we love this, but it's not for our channel, whatever. And then we ran out of channels, and I was like, went back to a business partner. We're like, surprised they didn't pick up that show. And he was like, you're all right. I was like, 
we need our own TV channel. That's how I always thought. How do you get around the people that are... Immediately, I was like, we need our own channel. Because yeah. if we had our own channel, then I don't need to... F and then he said, well, you know, what if people... Who's going to watch the channel? And I said, ah, yeah, but you're not thinking straight. Because sometimes in America, when you pitch a show, they'll go, yeah, we can give you X amount of millions per episode, but who's your UK broadcaster? Who's going to show it in the UK? So essentially, like, they didn't care who's showing it as long as it was shown. So I was like, if we had our own channel, we could get our shows financed in America. Because when they go, who's showing it in the UK, we go X channel, they don't give a f mm. You know what I mean? So we were trying to always find, find our ways. Around. Like, that's how I always thought. Mm. There was never a day. And it's sad. There's some people going to watch this and go, well, that's f***ing sad. Mm. But maybe they're not as driven as you or I. Mm. There's some people who are going to be watching and be like, I get that, that's me. Mm. And good luck to you. I don't think... It's fully healthy, but if you are not a person that doesn't have it, you won't understand. If you are a person that has it, you will understand it helps you. You are successful because you have that drive. You are successful because every time you get to that point where most people would go, ah, you're just like, see ya, and you keep going. I had friends of mine say to me, oh yeah, I could get a promotion at work, man, and you know, but I think I don't want it. I'll just coast along and... Uh, I'm like, what? I'm like, you could get a promotion, but you don't want it because you just want to coast along. I'm like, that's alien. That's alien talk to me. Like, I'll take it all. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And then when you're at the top, you don't have to, then you don't have to work if you don't want. Mm. That's just who I've always been. Mm. I know it sounds, when I say it out loud, I'm like, it sounds crazy. But anyone who has it will, will understand yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. And do you think that's the way you can take your career to the next level? Um, you've had some disruption to it, but <laughs> fucking dis well, I'm, I'm sure disruption. If, if, if well, if if we, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced, um, if we get to have a conversation in the near future, you'll be right back in the game where you want to be. I'm absolutely convinced of that. I'm, I'm glad you were convinced. I think there are battles that people don't. A lot of the doors I opened were not opened for me. I think this is known. People know that I was sort of, you know, I, I got in the doors, kicked them down or whatever like that. So I was never wanted in those rooms anyway. So now those doors have been slammed with what is, is seen as reason. Those people now don't have to open the doors. Do you know what I mean? So it's a lot more difficult now than it even was starting out. So I, I, honestly, I honestly don't know, you know, but it, it's, it's just... You know, what people thought they saw was the biggest takedown of a villain that we've seen in this place. And actually what you actually saw was the biggest example that outsiders are not wanted. Because I was always an outsider and they basically were always waiting for a reason. Always waiting for a reason, which is why, obviously I, I don't like these things anyway, which is why I always thought, don't do any drugs, don't drink. Don't be in any parties or situations where you can never, never did anything. Don't fall out of the, the string fellas at 3 a.m. with some stripper or whatever. Never done none of that. You can check back my 20 years. There's none, there's none of that stuff. Firstly, because I didn't want to, because that's not me. But secondly, because I was always conscious. You know, so when people go, oh, he was doing all that. I thought I was flying straight. Mm. I genuinely did. I know what's being said. I know what people believe or what they, but I genuinely thought I was like, a person that was flying straight. I've seen people not fly straight, so I know what that looks like. Mm. There's people that are working now, there's people that everyone claps and cheers, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I know they don't fly straight. I thought I was flying straight. Do you know what I mean? So, so it's, it's harder now, because actually, you've been painted as this thing, but actually what it really was was like, working class, looking the way I do, sounding the way I do, not part of the elite. I was never really wanted there, You'll find some new doors to kick down though, won't you? If you're a door kicker, you just, it's, you're just in that yeah, I've transition of finding some new doors got to a, kick I've got down. to find them. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking. That, dr that drive and that determination and that everything that I, you know, I, I'm looking, you know. Mm. But it, it's interesting. It's funny because you know, the, the, the narrative is, I saw this journalist the other day and he, he, he basically, he said, he put out this tweet saying, Clark's powerful industry friends were 
inviting journalists out for dinner and trying to convince them to uncancel him. It, I, as soon as I knew this was the thing, I left the meeting immediately and left, and that's what every journalist should do. So I saw the thing, and two minutes later, I get a, a text from the person that took him to dinner. And she says, I just saw what that journalist said online. And she's like, that is absolutely not what happened. She says, I took this person to dinner and your name came up and that is the be all and end all of it. But when these people have a narrative and they put out their narrative, it can just spread like wildfire. So that's what, it's those sorts of things that make everything a little bit more difficult than, than it used to be. But as I said, I'm looking and I'm trying to just do what I do. Mm. I'm creating, I'm writing. I'm yeah. writing probably the best stuff. I'm probably writing the best stuff I've ever written, wow. to be honest. And you might not have had the time or space were this not happening. 100%. Yeah. I've spent more time with my baby than, yeah. there's more time with this baby than all the, than all the others mm. at this age. Yeah. You know, so this one actively looks for me. Mm. <laughs> all the others, I was sort of a secondary thought if yeah. mum wasn't around, where this one will get up and look for me. Mm. You know, so that's been special. Yeah. It? Yeah, so I've got this mentor and he says that um, wisdom and maximum growth is on the border of support and challenge. And every situation, event or person has an equal upside and downside. And um, generally when bad things happen to us, it's because we're seeing just the downside and none of the upside. The upside is there, we just can't see it yet unless we have wisdom and presence. Yeah. And yeah. often we can go five years into the future and look back and go, that was one of the best things that ever happened to well, me. I don't know if I say that, but I get, yeah. the, but I get the point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and are, you out the, are, are you sort of out enough now to be able to start to see some of the upsides of this? I'm starting, no. <laughs> well, you just said one, your youngest baby coming to you. Yes, yeah. Is, is that not a memory that's, you can, is that's that? That's cherished, 100%, yeah. yeah. And you're writing the best you've ever written. You're right. And you're you wouldn't right. have had the space for that if you you're, were you're very right. out. See, but this, yeah. is my, this is my personality. And you're of, on this show as this well. Is, I'm on this show. This is my personality of like, I see the opposite because it fuels me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But you're right, yeah. You know, I, I think I don't yet see the upside to the situation because I, because I think it was a, a messed up situation for a lot of people. For myself, the people that, that said what they said, for the ones that believe what they said, yeah. you know. Um, for the ones that know that they're talking sh mm. for the people that I, I have upset in, in ways that I'm like, well, hey man, if, if I've upset you, then yeah. fine. But what, but what happened didn't need to happen, should never have happened, had no right to happen. And, and I, think, I think everyone's starting to see that now. Mm. Um, but coming out of that for everyone, I, I hope that all of them can just move on. And I'm just trying to just move on and get on with my life and, and do what I do better than a lot of people, even if people don't want to admit that, and do what I do and, and, and just create. Because that's, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm here for. It's funny, when the day, this, the day it all happened, I had a vision of something, which I, I won't tell you about unless it happens. But it was something, when you say the upside, it was something so up that it was almost like, why are you having this vision in this situation? It's like the day after this all happened, it's like a, like a nightmare, I was having nightmare sweats, you know, panicking about everything. And I just had this, this one vision, which was like a really positive vision, just plucked out of nowhere. And I believe that can happen. Cause I know me, mm. I know what I do. I know who I am. I know how hard I work. I don't see how I'm getting there to whatever that vision was but I believe it can happen because mm. I know that I would have got there anyway. Mm. So it'll be interesting. If it ever does, I'll come here first. Oh, I look forward to that. <laughs> you heard that here. <laughs> if it does, I'll come here first. Deal. Deal. Don't what? tell James, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> James is getting some good plugging on our show. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. man. Is that no, no, it's I'm not. Advertising. No, no, sorry. no. Fr free advertising. Um, we're doing a collab, aren't we, James and I? We're talking. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to do something together. And oh, good. We've had some similar guests. Um, He's a good guy. Yeah, yeah. there's some sort of crossover of, of guests. So what makes a great creator? Like you talked a lot about creating. What makes a great creator? Unique, I think unique ideas that know who they're meant for. Do you know what I mean? Like something unique, whether, you, whether it's, you know, something unique, whether it's films, or, you know, I, I mostly focus on films and TV because that's what I do. But like even with other things, something unique, something that is, 
different, right? But also, excuse me, knowing who they're for. Like, I know who my things are for. I know what, what I do. Like, yes, you want something for everyone, but that's not, that's not reality. No. There's going to be people that hate the shape of your water bottles. Do you know what I mean? It's just, it's just not reality. So you have to go, I know who this is for, and hopefully that bleeds out to a general populace where more people can enjoy it. So for me, that's, that's a, that makes a great creator. Mm. And consistently, whether it's quality or quantity, but consistently coming up with, with things. Mm. Mm. Hey, quick, before you go, if you want to watch the full, raw, uncut version of this episode in detail, no holds barred, you can watch it here. But before you go, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on.